Police have released the identities of two of the latest murder victims. They say the body found at 445 Sunday morning at Don McKay Boulevard in Marsh Harbor, Abaco, with gunshot injuries to the body, is that of 22-year-old Stanley Charles McIntosh III of East Bay Street in Marsh Harbor. Seven Abaco men are in custody in connection with the incident. And the man shot and killed at Wright's Lane off Wolf Road yesterday is 23-year-old Renato Alpheus Minnis of Bimini Avenue. Investigations into both matters continue. Meantime, police are also investigating two shooting incidents. It was around 7.25 p.m. Monday when a phone card vendor while in Ridgeland Park was robbed of cash and those cell phone cards and shot in the abdomen. He's in serious condition in hospital. An hour later at Market Street and Wolf Road, a 25-year-old male of Black Village was shot to the arm. He's listed in stable condition. In commemoration of its 150th anniversary as a diocese of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands, the Anglican Communion launched its first ever Book of Profiles of the Anglican Church throughout the years. The 122-page must-read provides a taste of each of the 96 congregations, their emblems and clergy. The book has been eight months in the making and is the brainchild of Tax Turnquest. Bishop Leish Boyd is encouraging everyone, particularly Anglicans, to grab a copy. Today we wish to make known to the Bahamas and to the Turks and the Caicos Islands that this wonderful booklet is available. It has been bound in soft cover and in hard cover. It showcases every parish in the diocese, every congregation in that parish. It shows a photograph of the church building, a photograph of the altar, shows the clergy serving in that parish and gives other pertinent information. It is a monumental work. Now the mastermind behind the design of the book, Tex Turnquest, says he couldn't have completed the book without the help of Bishop Gilbert Thompson and Harriet Pratt. He says copies of the book will be available at the Anglican Diocese for between twenty and thirty dollars. I'd just like to express my sincere gratitude to you for giving us the latitude to develop this product and I also would like to express a heartfelt thanks to Harriet Pratt and Robert Bartlett for working with me. They could have easily said something else but I was so happy that they agreed to work with me. I approached them personally because I felt that we could work together and pull this off within the time frame we felt necessary. Meantime, the bishop is also encouraging Bahamians to quote, vote, 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 saying it's important for Bahamians to add their voice to the chorus. The Bahamas, the land of sun, sand, sea, and speed? Well, that's what drew hundreds to the capital recently as NASA hosted Speed Week. The whole event, when displayed to a French-speaking audience, was yet another endorsement of the Bahamas as the playground to the world. This announcer on the UK television network Discovery Turbo, which features all things transportation, declares, we're in the Bahamas for Speed Week. The event has a decades-long history in the Bahamas. The original Nassau Speed Week took place from 1954 to 1966 and featured many of the great racing drivers of the period. Sure, the look of the motor masterpieces has changed, but the level of excitement over them and this destination hasn't. A golf car right now. Okay, but it wasn't all about the fast rides. When Turbo stopped off in Harbor Island, things significantly slowed down. There, historian Martin Grant gives this host a lesson in Harbor Island transport. He tells her this is the little car that Harbor Islanders get around in. They joke about what happens if they're stopped by the police. He says that's not usually a problem. This one. Okay. That's, yeah. This golf cart sales and rental owner drives a hard bargain. Ah oui, combien? dollars. He tells the show that this top-of-the-line cart goes for around $32,000. For those who can afford it, it's just the right speed for an island expedition. 
Welcome to tonight's edition of the Business Beat, sponsored by Royal Fidelity. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Altaviz Munnings. Let's take a look at what's making business news today. The local daily reporting today that American Eagle, a subsidiary of American Airlines, is reportedly terminating the lease of nine turbo air props flying out of Miami. Tourism and Aviation Minister Vincent Vanderpool Wallace was quoted in the article that a meeting is set for next week with the troubled airline to discuss a whole series of matters. From Grand Bahama, some 60 new jobs expected to be created on that island with the opening of the restaurant's Senior Frogs and Sparkies at the Lucayan Harbor. Grand Bahama Port Authority President Ian Roll telling the local daily that the new investments should put a dent in Grand Bahama's 21% unemployment rate. From the International Business Beat, rating agency Standard & Poor's has classified Greek debt as a, quote, selective default following the deal it made with creditors to reduce its debts. S&P says the terms of that deal trigger the latest downgrade. In regional business, the federal government of St. Kitts and Nevis has announced a debt exchange offer of certain bonds and commercial bank loans owed by the federal government, the Nevis Island Administration, and public enterprises in return for new United States dollar and Eastern Caribbean dollar denominated bonds to be issued by the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Remember, you can send us an email or join us on www.znsbahamas.com or become our friend on ZNS's official Facebook page. And that will end tonight's edition of The Business Beat, sponsored by Royal Fidelity. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Alta Beast Monnings.